Hi, my name is Nick Metcalf and I'm a technical consultant at Pragmatic Solutions. Today, I'm going to be taking you through how to set up Power BI and link it to your Dynamics 365 data. Step one, download Power BI desktop app. To do this, just search powerbi.microsoft.com forward slash desktop. From here, you can then have an options of downloading. We'll download it using the Microsoft Store. So click this. We'll then give you a link to open the Microsoft Store where you can download the Power BI desktop app. Once it's downloaded, you can then launch it. When it launch, it will look something like this. Step two, login. So the first thing you need to do is sign in to your Dynamics account. So you just paste your Dynamics username, click continue. After this, you may be prompted to sign up for Power BI if you haven't already done. You can see when you're logged in because you'll see your username in the top right corner. Step three, configure the import settings. So before you start importing your data, some useful things to check and configure are to firstly go to File, Options, and then underneath Current File, go to Data Load, and I would advise turning off these settings. These settings automatically detect relationships when you load in your data and can sometimes undo customizations you've performed, so they're best left off. The other thing you need to check is that your Dataverse in your Dynamics 365 is enabled to be connected to Power BI. To do this, you go and search admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com to get up the admin center for the Power Platform. You then go to your environment, settings, product, features, and then in the bottom right here, this TDS endpoint that you need to ensure that this has been enabled. Once all this is ready, you're ready to load in your data. Step four, get data. So to get your data into your Power BI report, you click this button up here, and then you're going to want to connect to the Dataverse. So you're going to want to type in Dataverse and use the Dataverse connector. This then you must enter your URL for your Dynamics 365 instance. So to do this, you just go up here and you want everything from here to here. So you don't want to include HTTPS or the forward slash at the end. Then you need to specify your connectivity mode. We're just going to import our data locally. Once you've done this, you need to sign into your organization and then you'll be presented with a list of all the tables in your Dynamics 365 Dataverse. So these are the tables you'll want to include in your report. So for this example, we will include accounts, contacts, and opportunities. When you've chosen your tables, you'll get a preview of the data here, and then you can load it or transform the data before loading it into your Power BI report to perform any manipulations you may wish. We will just be loading it in straight away. When the data has loaded in, you'll see the selected tables appear in this field section here, ready for you to add them to your report. If you navigate to the left hand sidebar, you'll see this section here. If you click on this data button, then you'll also see all the rows in the tables that you've loaded in. And you can see all the data you've loaded into Power BI. The most important step is now to create the relationships between the data. Step five entity relationship diagrams. This is where you can enter all the relationships between your data. 
So for example, here on our account records, we have a primary contact field. So we're going to want to link our account record to contact via the primary contact relationship. So to do that, we just have to find the relevant field that links the two. So primary contact ID. And so that's the lookup field on the count primary contact. And we need to link it to the unique identifier of contact, which is contact ID. To create this relationship, we simply drag and drop the two fields onto each other. And this will create the relationship. Normally, the, relation, the Power BI will work out the relationship for you, but you sometimes may need to edit it. To do this, you just double click on the relationship and it will bring up a pop-up screen with all the details of that relationship. So we can see the two fields that are linked. We can see the type of relationship. So whether it's one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one or many-to-many. -many. In this case, we have many accounts linked to one contact and the direction of the filtering. So do you want the filtering to be done in both directions or a single direction? You may only have one relationship active between two tables. So for account and contact, there are multiple relationships in the system, but you have to pick one that is active. And that is what you can do with this button there. So I will now go and make uh, the remaining relationships I want to have in my data model. In this case, I would like to link my account to opportunity so I have the account ID field, that's the lookup field to account on opportunity, and I need to link it to the unique identifier of the account, which is count. My finished entity relationship diagram looks something like this. Step six, visualizations. My Power BI report consists of a series of visualizations, which I can add using the visualizations pane on the side here. Here I can see a list of all the visualizations in Power BI, and I can add additional ones using this button here. There are two main ways to use visualizations. The first is to combine data from lots of different tables into a single visualization. So for example, to include details from account and the primary contact record on one visualization. So for example, to do this, I will use a grid, resize it a little bit. And then I'm going to add the relevant fields from this section into the values, which will add it to the grid. So for example, I'd like to include the account name and the number of employees. I can then add the relevant detail from the related primary contact using our entity relationship diagram. So I go to the contact and then I just add the related fields from the related record here. So full name and say job title. And you can see here that I've got all the accounts that have related contacts have had that primary contact information put onto this grid. The second way I can use my visualizations is to aggregate data. So for example, let's say I want to aggregate up all the estimated revenue of opportunities associated with accounts. So I made that relationship in my uh, entity relationship diagram. So I, let's say we add a chart. I'm gonna to want to see the relationship is with accounts. So I'm gonna to want to see account name on the X axis. And then I'm gonna to want to aggregate the opportunity estimated value. So I put that in values and automatically what it will do, because this is a one to many relationship, it will aggregate up my opportunities and you can see all the ways it's possible to aggregate. So instead of finding the total estimated value of all the accounts opportunities, I could find the average value or the minimum value, etc. Often, once you've made your visualizations, you're also going to need to filter it to see only the data you want to see. To do this, we use this filters pane here. So you can see it's already added the fields I've added to my visualization. And so let's say I only want to see the top 10 accounts based on revenue. So I can either filter by the name of the account 
or I can do a top 10. So I'll do the top 10 and then I need to specify top 10 what. So in this case, I want to do the top 10 estimated revenue. I can apply that and I can see now I've only got the top 10 estimated revenue accounts. If I want to filter by a field that isn't already on my visualization, all I need to do is just drag it across. So for example, if I wanted to, to uh, filter by when my opportunities were created, I could filter by relative date and say in the last 10 days that I can apply that filter like that and it filters it as such. Once I've made my visualizations and filtered them, I can then set about changing their appearance to make my report look a little bit nicer. To do that, I can change the names of my fields by right clicking them and clicking rename. And then I can improve the overall appearance of my visualization by clicking on this section here to format it. And I have several options on improving the formatting of my report. Step seven, accessing your report. When you're happy and finished with your report and are ready to share it within your organization, you first need to create a workspace to save it to. To do this, you go and search app.powerbi.com. This brings up the online version of Power BI. Navigate down to workspaces and create a new workspace, which we'll call Power BI Report. Click save and we've created our workspace. We can now save our Power BI from desktop to this online workspace. To do that, we click publish. We can then select our workspace and then it will begin to publish to this online workspace. Once it is published, we get the success message. And if we go to the online workspace and give it a refresh, we will see that the Power BI report is now here and we are able to view it online and share it within our organization. So those were the seven steps you need to set up Power BI for your organization and connect it to your Dynamics 365 data. If anyone has any questions about Power BI or are looking to adopt it within your organization, please reach out to us either by email at marketing at pragmaticsolutions.co.uk or by phone on 01908 038 110 or go to our website pragmaticsolutions.co.uk. Thank you.